Hello, today Sassy and I want to go over the differences between a service dog, a therapy dog, and an emotional support dog. Now the thing is, this is actually a pretty big subject because what you have is you got a definition difference, you got different rights, and then there's the dog, uh, uh, the animal types that you can use. So instead of doing a humongous long um, video, I'm going to split it up into three parts. So the first one, the video for today, we're going to do the definition of these three different types of working animals. I kind of went down a rabbit hole when I started doing this research. It really got kind of complicated and I just searched quite a few different types of uh, websites to try to figure out what to what was working best. And um, some of the ones that I used the most were um, the American Kennel Club and USA Service Dog were the two that gave me the most information about these types of dogs. And I was really, really surprised at what I found uh, when I went through all this. And it was also a bit confusing because a lot of it contradicted itself or it's like, your dog could be a service dog, but if you did something just slightly different, it would qualify as, Sassy, over here. It would qualify, it would qualify as a service dog. Oh, come here, sit down. And then you've got your emotional support animals, which I found a lot out about and hadn't fully understood what they were until I started looking into them. So I wanted to go, th wanted to kind of give you the definition of what these are. And I went ahead and printed off what I um, made a, uh, did research on it. I read it all out because I wanted to make sure I got it right. Now, before I start this, I want to make sure, I want to put out that a lot of times these rules and definitions change. So this is is July 2021. If anyone finds something that um, is uh, contradictory to this or you have questions, please put it in the comments. And if you found something, if you found something that um, contradicts what I have, send me the link so I can look at it and go through it. That way I can make another video to uh, explain uh, or go over the differences uh, based on the uh, information you found. Now the thing is, is when you do your own research, make sure you look at the year it was published because some of these things have changed from uh, like 2019 to now. So that's something you've got to watch too when you do your research. Uh, I will put my um, the links to the research I did down in my description so that you can also look through it and um, uh, find out a bit more. At least it'll give you a starting point of where to find more information about your particular type of dog. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start off with a service dog definition. A service dog is a dog specifically trained to perform a perform work for a person with a disability. Uh, any dog can be a service dog. It can be a um, small dog to a really big dog. And the service dogs do not have to be professionally trained. You can train them yourself. Um, the important thing, and this is important, the important thing is the dog is trained to be a working animal and not a pet. Now that is something that is very um, hard to understand because you see a dog and you think pet, but the thing is, is that your pet is more than just a pet. It's a working animal. So you may have a very good relationship with your uh, service animal, but they are a working animal and normally a service animal is working 24 seven, depending on the disability. Um, a service animal helps a person with a disability lead a more independent life. Now that can mean so many different things. I mean, that could be from someone, a dog helping someone push a wheelchair, could help someone with panic, panic attacks be able to go out in public and uh, be able to control the panic attacks more easily or be able to, uh, like um, what Sassy does for me, is she uh, lets me know when I'm about to go into a panic attack so I can start taking steps to uh, either get out and uh, basically ride through the panic attack with her calming me down or for um, her to help uh, make me calm down because what she does is she makes me pet her. It's an act she does. She literally rubs up against me until I start petting her, which helps me start 
uh, it grounds me and starts relieving the stress and I'm able to realize what is stressing me out and work, go accordingly. That's one of the things she's trained to do. So that, and it allows me to actually go out in public. Another one could be, um, which you see very commonly, is a CNI dog. Well, with a CNI dog, a person can go out and they don't, and are able to navigate the world uh, because now they have the CNI dog who's their eyes. So those are some examples. It literally it makes it a lot, it makes it possible for a person to go out and live a normal life. Next one, a dog is an individual trained to perform, to work, do work or perform tasks, that's a key word, perform tasks for a person with a disability. Now, these tasks could be, like I said, leading a person who's blind, letting a person know when there are noises coming around, like a hearing, uh, hearing dog, uh, a uh, dog that uh, detects diabetes, a uh, dog where um, uh, a lot of times people with panic attack or PTSD, the, their dogs have many different skills that help their owners, or their handlers handle that. And um, I just listed what mine was. That's just one of many things that I've, heard, I've seen. Uh, I've actually heard someone who has PTSD, his dog was actually, he trained his dog to lean up against his back whenever he was going into a panic attack because that that dog had now had his six. He had someone watching his back. So he, so he uh, was able to calm down as he watched things around him and knew his back, his, um, his back was safe. So um, that is another one that uh, I've seen being done. So it's a long list of different ways that a service dog can do it, but it is a task, physically something that they do. Um, so some other examples would be um, that I didn't learn, so a mobility dog uh, assists individuals who use a wheelchair, walking devices, or have balance disabilities. So there are some dogs out there who are strong enough to um, help a person walk so, or catch them as they're falling. Another dog, another animal that I've seen as being a service animal is a miniature horse. And I've seen those both be for the mobility and also as seeing animals. Now, I haven't seen a lot of them, but I've definitely heard about them, and it's really amazing what they can do. But uh, the miniature horses I can definitely see being used for mobility because they're already really strong animals, and they're meant to hold loads like that. And miniature horses are just as strong as, as dogs, just as um, smart as dogs. Oh, hearing eye dogs, I'm sorry, hearing dogs helps alert their um, handler to uh, important sounds. The guide dog helps people who are visually impaired, so it doesn't have to be someone who's completely blind, they could be partially blind, uh, be able to navigate the world. The other one is psychiatric service dogs. Now this is the first time I've actually seen this one when I did my research and it doesn't list everything or if it's listed, it's listed differently than what you would have called it. I actually had to look up some of these words and go, oh, that's what that is and that goes with that because they're using more um, scientific um, medical words versus what we would normally use. So one is obsessive compulsion disorder. Uh, post-traumatic stress, stress disorder, so PTSD, schizophrenia, I'm going to, there should be the word underneath it, and, uh, and other conditions. Like I said, that just lists a few that they mentioned. Uh, examples of work performed by psychiatric service dogs would include entering a dark room and turning on the light to... Um, negate stress-induced conditions. So a lot of time uh, you go into the room and you're, it, you can't tell what's there. And there are, many, there are many different reasons of why someone would be afraid to go into a dark room. So you send your dog in and the dog is trained to turn the light on. And uh, especially if, um, if it's in a place that uh, you can't get to very readily. Uh, another one would be interpreting rep interrupting repetitive behaviors. So, um, I once described that uh, one of my conditions when I uh, am starting to get uh, over in, into a panic attack is I start scratching myself. One of the things Sassy does, she bumps me with her arm and makes me pet her versus scratching myself, which I will do, I will scratch myself raw. So intro, so that would be some, that would be an example. And reminding a person to take medication. Now that one is, um, uh, one of the ones I know that has become very popular is the um, the diabetes one. It's the most uh, recent one that has become very popular topic among people, along with uh, children having um, 
uh, seizures is another one where the dog literally lays on the child to um, uh, comfort them uh, and help them through the seizure. So that's the definition of a service dog. And remember I was telling you working dog and performing tasks. These are very, very key words. And this is what separates them from the other animal, the other types of an, um, working animals. So the next one I have is a therapy dog description. Now this one, a therapy dog is a working animal owned by a non-disabled owner. Now that's what is mostly owned by because this is what comes next. A therapy dog is a dog trained to provide love and comfort to people in long-term care, hospitals, retirement homes, schools, mental health institutes, or stressful situations like natural disaster areas. So the therapy dog was actually first meant for this and was trained and um, we're not exactly trained to be a therapy dog. What, the, what their training would be how to behave in a uh, in an environment such as you don't pee in the in the store, you don't bark, you don't pull on the leash, that type of training. Uh, therapy dogs typically work in animal assisted uh, programs and therapies. Uh, therapy dogs are not service dogs. There's been a lot of confusion with that, that the, uh, people think that therapy dogs are service dogs, especially when um, a lot of people, uh, what their dog does, like, like I said, Sassy, what she does is she makes me pet her, which helps relieve the stress. And what a therapy dog does is it helps people relieve the stress. What makes Sassy different from a therapy dog, she performs the task of making, making me pet her to stop scratch so I will stop scratching myself so I'm pulled out of whatever is stressing me out and focusing on her that is her task she is making me pet her a therapy dog does not do that the therapy dog just provides love and um, comfort to people who need it primary role of a therapy dog is to make physical contact with people and who dogs who really enjoy the people's company so they're normally dogs that are um, Love the attention of people and really get along with people. And that, again, that's very broad because I've seen very few dogs that don't love being around people. Now, there are a few dogs that are like that and probably would make better service dogs because they're attached more to one person versus be, wanting to be around everybody. Um, but that's, that's another difference that they do. Um, therapy dogs tend to be very friendly affectionate, gentle, and confident in all situations. Um, so um, all of that, again, also sounds like a service dog. And it also sounds like an emotionally, emotional support dog when we get into that. Um, the big thing that's different is, like I said, it's performing that task. That is really what, what separates the two. Um, they tend to really enjoy human contact and enjoy being handled petted and sometimes in a clumsy manner, which means they don't mind that, that um, people are petting them very clumsily. Uh, just think of what it, how a child would pet a dog. It's not very, um, it, it's, they're kind of clumsily falling around there. They pet the tail, they're going all over the place, something like that. And therapy dogs do not have the same special access as service dogs because they do not perform special tasks like a service dog does. So when we get into the rights of service dogs, therapy dogs, and emotional support dogs, you're going to see that big difference. Come on, girl. And um, really, again, it's performing that task. Um, go, girl. Go ahead, lay down. Um, performing that task that uh, is what really separates um, a service dog from a therapy dog. Okay, so, but yeah, there's a lot of confusion in with that. Uh, like I said, there are some people whose um, therapy dogs really tow that line with service dogs, and then there are service dogs that really tow that line with, they could go either way. And um, so that's where it gets very, very confusing. So if you have a dog that could go either way, teach them the task of what they can do to help make your life better. Uh, like I said, Sassy makes me pet her to be able to pull myself out of the panic attacks that I might have or the anxiety that I'm about to go into. 
uh, she and um, it's a physical act. The other one, like I said, they uh, other dogs turn on the light. So what you would do is look more into, oh, my dog gives me uh, comfort and makes me feel better. How, how are they doing it? What are they doing that makes it possible? Uh, what phys what task? Are they doing and then you pet them does not work they have like I said sassy makes me pet her to be able to um, pull me out of um, the round around uh, anxiety I get into um, next one is the emotional support dog also called ESA they're also sometimes referred to as companion animals. Now, the big thing about this one is when I first heard this, I immediately thought, oh, it's a pet. Um, there, It's actually a little more than just a pet. Basically, um, unlike service animals, an, an emotional support animal is also not a working animal. So this is not a wor working animal. Uh, emotional support dogs are dogs that provide comfort and support in forms of affection and companionship for an individual suffering from various mental and emotional conditions. So again, it's kind of, it's towing over to some of the aspects that yes, a service dog does, but also what a therapy dog does. Uh, I, here's the what is really big. A it is a pet that has been described by a licensed medical counselor or medical doctor. So basically a doctor that is a licensed, either a regular, you're a regular doctor or a mental doctor, uh, writes you a prescription saying you need a mental support animal. So that is what it is. That's the first time I've ever, sexy, no time for your close-up, come here. That is the first time I have ever heard of a doctor uh, or a med any type of medical consultant able to prescribe you that you need a pet <laughs> um, to be able to get a pet. I was very surprised when I read this, and the more and the information I get in a little bit more when we go f when we go into the next two videos is very very interesting. But going back to a more about the definition. An emotional support dog is not required to perform any special task for a disability like a service dog does. So basically, uh, this is where the dog, the dog or animal goes, I love you. It's just, the do animal is just there. They're there for you to take care of. Um, the, they're there to um, help pull you out of yourself anxiety pull, pull yourself out of yourself and focus on something else outside of you um one of my friends who actually has an emotional support animal she once said that it's hard to live for yourself so i'm going to live for someone else um that's real when you're in the, well, those mental deep mental states it is very hard to live for yourself but if you can live for someone else that's a step forward to staying alive to clinging to life so that's why a lot of times people, so that's a really good reason to have an emotional support animal. So the fact that a doctor can write the, a, a uh, prescription for that is really good. And there's a lot of benefits to it as we get into our next videos. Emotional support animals are meant solely for emotional stability and unconditional love. Uh, so again, going back into that. The other thing is they can assist with conditions such as anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder or um, bipolar mood disorder, panic attacks, fears, phobias, and other psychological and emotional conditions. Now again, this is moving over to a lot of the same things that a service dog or a therapy dog also does for their people. The difference is performing a task. The, the emotional support animals don't perform tasks. Basically, they're, they're, they're a pet. Okay, they're a pet that has been that a doctor has said you need this pet to love you and be part of your life. The term people call when they call their animals their fur babies, that's kind of what it is. They're taking care of their um, their emotional support animal who loves them, and there's no extra uh, training they have to do except for maybe the regular training you would do with any type of animal, such as house training and. Um, uh, uh, obedience training uh, is uh, for like with dogs. Uh, so that is pretty much what the difference is. Remember the big key thing with a service dog is they perform a task. And um, if for 
uh, I would look up other uh, videos and, on service dogs and see what type of tasks they do and um, really see, okay, th they do this task, is that what my dog should be doing? And really look into, is your dog really a service dog or do you actually really need an emotional support animal or is it a therapy dog you need? Because originally I thought I needed just a therapy dog until I began understanding my condition a little bit more and realizing that what I needed was a service dog, especially when Sassy began performing these tasks all on her own. And I will explain more on that on a much later on video uh, on how that happened. But uh, I hope these definitions helped. Again, I'm going to put the um, the links to the to, to uh, the American Kennel Society and the USS Service Dog um, uh, page. And again, if you find anything that is the contrary to what I said or you found more information or you got questions please put it in the comments below and uh, I will get back to I will um, either try to answer them or give you a link to go and find the, that can probably give you better answers or uh, if you send me the link to where you found the information that's different from what I said uh, please send it to me so that I can look into it and maybe make an update on this video uh, so that uh, we can continue sharing this information because like I said, this is very contradictory. There's a lot of stuff that is really towing the line and it can be very confusing. So that's it on definitions and as you can see from how long this, this um, video is, you're, this is why I, only, I want to split this up into three videos. So, um, so don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get the next video from us and we wish you a wonderful week and see you next Monday.